Um, our first speaker is Dr. Chinhua Chuan. Dr. Chuan is an assistant professor in the School of Computing. She has published refereed articles in journals and at conferences on audio analysis and music generation. Dr. Chuan received the Best New Investigator Paper Award at the Grace Cooper Celebration of Women in Computing in 2010, and she's the founder of the Women in Music Information Retrieval. Her topic is gaming and mobile app development with students. Software and hardware. 
They just don't do things in the same way. They try to be different, I guess. Okay. And uh, so what's worse is there are constant endless updates. Okay. So from the user point of view, you may think, well, I think it's fine. I just need to uh, click the button and say, I agree, go ahead, that's it. Well, from the programmer's perspective, an update can make a working app fail. An update can make an old phone become completely useless. So I really wanted to find effective ways to cover all the materials, at the same time make sure that students have enough opportunities to practice. So I did, in this semester, I decided to adapt uh, the concept of uh, so-called flipped classrooms. So what is this? So flipped classrooms basically, uh, we will let students study the lecture materials at home. And when we meet, we dedicate to problem solving, hands-on project assignments. So uh, this class is a Monday Wednesday class. So Monday, uh, I posted well. I posted the uh, video online a week ahead, um, so the student can watch it at home. And there are two types of videos. Uh, one is the lecture video, which I cover. Uh, the concept about uh, programming paradigms and the system design and so on. And the other type is the tutorials, so in which I uh, demonstrate how to write apps from scratch. And I think the tutorial videos, uh, they're extremely useful for students because uh, I don't think anyone can just write how to write apps by watching once. Okay? So by posting the tutorial video online, they can watch it again and again. And well, I don't think I don't know if I have time to show you the video, but uh, if I have time, I'll show you the, uh, the video later. Um, so on Wednesday, we will have the in-class uh, labs. So basically, the first thing we will do is um, I use Blackboard to give a quiz. So the quiz, the questions in the quiz are related to the, com uh, the contents in the online videos. So I want to make sure they study, they watch the video before they come to the class. And if they have questions, we can dis discuss face to face in the classroom. And uh, usually I give students one to two uh, hands-on projects to work on. So basically by the end of the class, they have to turn in their apps. So because of this hybrid approach, uh, I'm able to cover uh, both platforms, the Apple systems and Android systems, and I still have time to talk about uh, the gaming app. And uh, the last uh, two weeks in the semester, uh, we will uh, spend time together. I will help students develop uh, real-world final projects. Basically, they, they will uh, develop apps, uh, working fully working apps. So uh, I won't be able to teach this class in this way uh, without the support from school computing and research. So in school computing, you see the photo here. Uh, we have uh, a lab consists of 25 Mac computers. So why is it important? Well, because if you want to write apps for your beloved iPad, iPhone, you have to use a Mac computer, okay? And I don't <coughs> think it's reasonable to ask students to buy one if they want to register for this class. And so, uh, Mr. Mary Stanton, uh, he helped me uh, install the baby software uh, just a week before the semester started. The reason because I want to make sure everything is the latest. So we, we cannot just like, do the uh, install the software a, a, a semester ahead because that will become <coughs> completely outdated. 
And uh, also, uh, the director of school computing, Dr. Isa Zongli, uh, he's kindly helped us to purchase a couple of uh, hardware uh, devices like iPhone, uh, Android phones, iPad mini, uh, the Stencil tablet, so that the students can install their program to these devices and try test them on these uh, physical devices. And we also have, uh, in school computing, we also have a university account so that students can install and test their apps uh, on the physical devices for free. And uh, for CERT, um, I learned a lot of great ideas in the online uh, teaching seminar last uh, spring semester. So for example, I learned how to better use uh, Blackboard, how to use the software like uh, Ice Cream, uh, Screen Test Automatic, to produce online videos. And uh, I chose to use the video to host uh, the videos because I can specify how the video is, uh, is, uh, is shown and uh, shared by people. Okay. So, uh, however, there are other things I'm still trying to figure out. Okay. So, uh, for example, let's say if in the future we want to teach this course in a complete online format, how can we give those distance learning students the same support as the um, campus students have? Like the hardware support, and computers, uh, the mobile uh, physical devices, and software support. And second thing I want to uh, I want to explore is um, is it possible or how can we encourage uh, cross discipline projects? Okay, the reason is because um, I think it's more meaningful to ask students to develop an app that eventually can be used by someone else. Okay, it's not just an assignment they need to turn in. Uh, so, for example, last semester I had a team of students, uh, they developed uh, an app for DRC, and also another team of students developed uh, some kind of a Google Map app, uh, but uh, specifically for Internet Campus. Um, but right now, they stay as just assignment. Okay, so uh, I want to see uh, if we can somehow uh, have the collaborations between different units on campus so that on uh, one hand my students can, can have a uh, real world experience by working with people who are the users and on the other hand uh, the user, the receiver end can be benefited by the technology. So uh, I will conclude my presentation with these questions for discussions. Thank you. Write this app. 
Okay, so I will uh, highlight the things that uh, they need to know, but not just step-by-step -step, uh, instruction. So that decreases time in class having to actually go through all of that. Right. Get done homework. So, and you, um, the assignments that you give are dedicated to Mac Labs or the PC that would have to do the <coughs> development. Yeah. Oh, they have to do, do the development in class. In class. Okay. In class. They just have to write it out for them. Right. Right. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I noticed in your format you had a quiz on Wednesday. Is yes. this on the lecture material on Monday? Yes. So they have some pressure on them to ensure sure yes. they go through that. If they have a question on We can that. discuss in class. Okay, so the yes. quiz is administered after the lecture on Monday, but before they can ask questions. Right, that will be the first thing. Yes. And so you have good evidence that they do listen to your lectures ahead of time? Well, uh, I actually, on video, uh, I can see uh, how many people watch the video on which day and when, and which particular video they watch. So I don't know who that particular person watched my video, but I got a soft statistic how many people or how many times they watch the video. You have a map up there, and I see Lance is sitting over there, so I thought I would just make a comment. The new web page, Lance, your team has put together is awesome. I just wanted to ask, uh, what is the value of them working on the assignments in class? Is it to prevent cheating and copying of the code? Uh, or is it to be more interactive with the professor? And how would that compare to the regular classroom where the instruction is delivered to the class and home to the at home? Uh, I could see that if someone, for some reason or another, wasn't able to do their homework, they would still come to class and listen to the instruction. On the flip model, well, if you don't listen to the lecture, pretty much coming to the classroom would be worthless because you haven't listened to the material on which they need to do the homework. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, the reason why I want to um, spend time working on a hands-on project was staying in class is because this um, the mobile uh, app development is different from the traditional uh, programming uh, assignments. So uh, not only you need to understand programming languages, but also you need to know how to use the Apple's or Google's system. So a lot of time is they need to understand how to use the tools first. And of course, they need to learn the same test for different languages. So the reason why I want to work with them uh, is because I don't want them to get stuck forever. Okay, so it's really easy uh, for the student to get discouraged if they click here, drag here, run, doesn't work, run again, doesn't work, I don't want to work with it anymore. That happens a lot of times, and, and uh, believe it or not, in this class, and people will tell me, I just hate math. I don't want to work with math. <laughs> and when you talk about Android, they say, oh, I thought Android's better, but... Mm -hmm. So I just want to spend time with them, help them. So the, the, the lab assignment is not so much about cheating or grade, because I want to, I want to give them help, so that uh, if they have questions, they don't feel that embarrassed or they have to do this alone, they can ask me. How do you envision this uh, classroom uh, model uh, evolving as we implement the virtual labs? That's a good question. So, uh, I said, was it, this actually time was the, uh, my first point here, the discussion here. Um, I don't know. How do we support uh, the hardware? How do we give the, the hardware software support? And uh, for example, in the class, uh, if they have a problem with their program, I can just go there and sit there and then look at the programs. So if we uh, put this online, then 
how do we do that? How can I see their computer individually and so on? So I'm pretty sure there must be some way we can do it, but to do it uh, as perfect as face-to-face -face, uh, <coughs> session, that could be a challenge. Thank you, Chen We're going to move on to the next speaker now.